Hello and welcome to next episode of MTU podcast, so Microtic Universe. And uh, this one is very highly anticipated because in every uh, podcast so far, uh, this guest was mentioned, uh, his country was mentioned as an example of Microtic uh, usage rate in the whole country, whole education system and everything. And if, you wa if somebody wants to see the best example how Microtik is used anywhere, Indonesia is one of the first countries that comes in mind. <laughs> and one of the main person responsible for that is Valens, our guest here. Yes, hello everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I'm Valens from Indonesia and it's been, I think, 22 years I'm using uh, Microtik's. I think the first version is 2.3.15, I believe. When we don't have Winbox at that time, we still use a Java remote application. And it's been uh, really interesting the way how we use Microtix since, I think, since our internet uh, bandwidth under uh, 10 max, and now we have several. 100 gigs traffic. Okay, so uh, as a, everyone, uh, everyone has some background in something. Did you have any background in networking <laughs> yourself? Well, uh, I learned networking when I worked in the United States back in, I think, 98, when I was work for a US company. And my company start to make a local ISP. And we bought a big uh, router from one vendors, and the bonus is we got a training. So it's a it was a full week of training. When I was a developer actually at that time, a programmers, and I start learning what is IP address, what is a routing, what is a BGP only in one weeks, and then we start a, a very small ISP in the North Carolina, United States. And when I back to Indonesia in 2001, we start the company and we also built a ISP. At that time, it's a, for us, it's very expensive to buy a full feature hardware for switch and router until uh, I found Microtix software. And I still remember that uh, at that time, we installed Microtech using a floppy disk, I think a seven or eight floppy disks, one by one. And we installed it on the very low performance PC and it works well. I think that's the starting when I love, I use Microtech. Yeah, so that was 2000 and? It was 2001. 2001. So it's very rarely that I meet a person that predates me in Microtech usage. <laughs> yes, I, I think you even worked at Microtech at that time. I started in 2004. Okay. So, uh, okay, so that was the software. Yes. Uh, I also know that you met uh, Microtech uh, staff early on. Mm -hmm. How, what was it? Actually, before I met the staff, I met the hardware first. And maybe uh, all of you think that the first hardware is a router bot 230, right? But we have a earlier version. It's uh, only the PCMCI card with antenna. And this is the real antenna, what we bought on 2002. It's a five gigahertz antenna. It's, it's the original version, <laughs> the antenna we bought from Microtik at 2002. And we still have this. Do you keep it in museum? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Yes, and uh, in 2004, uh, 2004, I believe, uh, Microtech start to produce the 230, and I still have the working version of 2000, uh, 230. And Arnis called me one day, and he asked if I can help Microtech to deploy a training class in Jakarta, Indonesia. It's a, it was in 2004. 
And I said yes, and I start to prepare the training class. It's only to I think 24 people join that class, and we use 230 router board as the router in the class, and I think we only have 10 of uh, router board for that class, and it's it's I I have a picture from that class, and it's really interesting. It's still not the era of a laptop actually. We have a PC in the class, we have a monitor with a big monitor in the class. And yes, we have a first training microtech in Jakarta. And I believe that's uh, the first official microtech training outside Latvia. So our big training class movement also started in 2004. Uh, so my first training was in Malta first class that I made. At that point, we had the basic and advanced mm -hmm. certification. Yes, yes, yes. And slowly but slowly, uh, we started to develop that system. And the, basically, the biggest class, the first big, biggest class that we had was in the first European MUM, 2006. Yes, 2006. And that was the place when we met the, for the first time. Yes, that's also the first MUM I visit, And it's the first microtech MUM, actually. Yeah. So there's basically other person that uh, everyone is asking to get on the podcast and talk about this. You, can you guess who? Uh, Yaromir. Of course, of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, were you participant in the first uh, trainings also? Or uh, am I mi missing something on the first mom? No, actually, uh, I didn't participate on the class because I already passed the class. And I think it's on. It's also basic and advanced. At the time, we call it a basic and advanced class, and it's start from the IP address until BGP. Yeah, and at that at that point, I started to receive feedback that we need uh, to divide uh, that class into more smaller classes. Uh, mm -hmm. There's too much information going on in those trainings at once, and we need more trainings with the sm smaller topics. Yeah, actually, at the time. Uh, I start my own class at 2006, and we also use the term basic and advanced, and it was a five days of class, actually, because I think I cannot deliver these topics only in three days, so we make it a five days training. It was really hard to prepare because there was like 600 slides for three days. <laughs> there was yes. lots of information that... Uh, didn't get into the heads of the class just uh, just on the paper but yeah uh, after that we slowly slowly started to divide and distribute the topics into the smaller training topics and i remember you were a big part of it because you gave a lot of feedback about uh, how to divide the class yes and actually uh, i helped microtix uh, to make a question for the certification also because at the time, you guys still use Moodle for the certification engine. So I, I have an account that can make a question, make a class and everything there. So yes, uh, I also make a lot of questions at that time. Yeah, you were very active. And uh, at, at some point uh, during that 2005 and 6, uh, we decided that we need to make a train retrainers class and introduce mm -hmm. more trainers in, into the, our fold so that uh, more people can learn about Microtech. And uh, it's kind of interesting because you predate the train the trainers. Yes, I, I, don't have, I don't have a trainer certificate until 2009 actually. Until I, someone asked me, uh, what is your number of the trainer? Well, I don't have. <laughs> and then Microtech just print a certificate for me and it's, I think, 49. But in fact, you are 00. zero. So, <laughs> zero, zero. <laughs> so the, the very first one before everything started. Okay, yeah. so in Indonesia, uh, it's a very special place for Microtech because uh, it we already traveled few months, but uh, when we finally got to Indonesia, it was like Microtech was more than like celebrities than the technical people. 
Everything yeah. is organized. Uh, basically, uh, you don't have to do anything as a MicroTik uh, guy. Just wave and present your presentation and take a lots of lots of pictures. So how yes. did how did it come to that part? How how did it started the movement and so on? Actually, uh, I think. The first microtic mom in Indonesia is at 2007 or 8 and then it was in Bali actually. It's not big, it's only like 100 people come until at 2009 we prepare a uh, mom and at Jakarta and we got 300 people and then it grows very fast 500 1000 and I believe the biggest one is 3,500 people. Yeah, but uh, so what do you think was the factors why it grow so, so much? What, what, uh, how, why it's in, in Indonesia is this way and maybe not in that way in other countries? Yeah, in Indonesia, Indonesia have a very specific condition that uh, we have a vocational school. It's the uh, same level with high school but it's a vocational school and actually Microtech have a program the Microtech Academy and we have a agreement with more than I believe 400 500 schools all around Indonesia where the teacher can make certification for the their own student and it really grow the number of Microtech user in Indonesia that's that's the first thing. Second one is a lot of uh, community, networking community. It's in Facebook and all other uh, digital platform. And we have a very serious and very, uh, a lot of discussion about microtics. And also a lot of uh, network provider, but the small one that really needs a solution for their software and hardware of routing, firewall, QoS and everything. So Microtik come in place where we don't have any competitors in terms of the vendors. If you start an ISP and you don't have a lot of investment to buy expensive router, the only choice is only a Microtik. For example, right now in Indonesia, we have more than 1,000 uh, network provider. You can imagine if, I, I believe more than 600 or 700 is a small ISP. And almost all of them use Microtik in their core network. Maybe only the medium and the high, high level ISP, they choose the expensive uh, hardware. But we have hundreds of ISP still using Microtix for their core network. And it makes a lot of user uh, use Microtix. And so do you have any information or maybe you guess an idea? What is the most uh, popular hardware model in Indonesia that people use? from Microsoft? Right now? Yeah, no, or previously or right now or both? Well, uh, almost all of your router is popular yeah the 400 series is popular if uh, an isp wants to have a tower with a lot of antenna the 800 router board is also uh, very popular and then you guys uh, make an embedded version of the wireless I think the LHG SXT is also very popular. I I go to a lot of place in Indonesia and I still see SXT and LHG on a lot of uh, tower. Yeah, that's one of the things when we visit Indonesia we also noticed. <laughs> yes, and also in in the Indonesia internet exchange, actually it's an internet exchange host by a company in Jakarta and also host by association of uh, internet provider there are like thousands of company connect to the exchange and if we see the percentage of the hardware connected on that uh, cloud the first one is microtics 
because I can see from the MAC address and we analyze and we calculate and Macrotix win. Thank you. It's nice to hear. So, there's also one big event that Microtik took apart. Unfortunately, it was a disaster, a tsunami. Maybe yes. we can talk about it a little bit. Yes, the tsunami is uh, happened in December 2004, just several weeks after the first training class in Jakarta. And uh, at that time, it's a very bad situation because the area in north part of Sumatra is really isolated in terms of electricity, in terms of information, and also the several uh, airstrip is broke, so it's quite difficult to ship anything there. And I talk with Microtic and I still have like six items of router about 200, and I asked if I can bring it to the area and help uh, the area to turn on again the internet access there. And the answer is yes. So with uh, several friends that voluntary works for networking company, I flew there and we built the access point in the city of Banda Aceh. So it's at that time, it's the only access internet in the area besides the satellite phones because uh, we don't have uh, dial-up, we don't have DSL at that time because everything is just broke. So the access point we brought there, we have a VSAT connection there and we built a very simple access point and everybody used that to send their news for the reporter, send their video and everything. So after that time, the, the network grow and we got a lot of help also from other vendors and we built the network of Banda Aceh based on wireless. We, we talked a lot about Indonesia, but uh, you yourself has a, have a little small company Maybe let, uh, let's have a talk about it. So what, what are you doing? <laughs> yes, uh, I work for Citra Web and all, that's a hardware distributors. We sell a lot of Microtix and also several other brands. But we have also an internet service provider and it's called Citranet. We operate in south part of Java, center south part of Java. And we start from wireless network. So our first customer using a wireless. And then right now we already have thousands of customers using the FTTH. Mm -hmm. So and uh, size-wise, are you small, medium, large company for Indonesia? Maybe medium, yeah. Maybe medium. Okay, so uh, I also have noticed that uh, because of your ISP status and so on, you have some unique um, implementations where you use Microtix with and sometimes you give us very good feedback about that something doesn't work exactly the way it is. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, how does Microtix cope and uh, how, how we react to your reports and everything? Yeah, actually... Uh, because we sell a lot of Microtik hardware, so I developed a team here, a technical team, to answer a lot of questions, a lot of support asking from the users. So if you see that you don't have a lot of questions from Indonesia, it's because we answer it. <laughs> and then, uh, yes, of course, uh, the main problem is the migration from the version 6 to version 7, I believe, because when you launch the version 7, when you finally launch version 7, and we have a lot of problem with some features. And also, in some features, the way how we set is very different from the version 6 to version 7, and it just takes time to learn, takes time to test, takes time to make a simulation 
how users should change from the version 6 to version 7 and that's that's the biggest uh, question right now because some users still don't want to use the version 7 because they still believe on version 6 but some users maybe because the hardware they bought a new hardware and they don't have choice to go with version 6 they have to try to use the version 7 and we have a lot of uh, tutorial video but it based on version 6 so they complain why it didn't work and why it's different uh, configuration yeah we have to explain it one by one and while we make a newer version of the tutorial based on the version 7 that's that's the biggest uh, thing we have to do right now in Indonesia and as an ISP yourself mm -hmm. are you version yeah. 6 or version 7 actually uh, just a couple minutes ago I checked uh, and they use the BGP with version 7 and it works we have uh, 50 peers of BGP and it works of course there is some they cannot do something but overall it works well okay so you are still moving to version 7 right or are you already we already moved to version 7 to the ev everything or just core um we have several bgp uh, router in the network one use other brand but we still have a very important uh, bgp router because we develop our own exchange we have a lot of uh, CDN content from Facebook, Google, Cloudflare and everything and a lot of ISP connect to that network also and I believe we use uh, one of them is using Microtix. So as a user of version 7 how do you describe the current state of the software this 7.9 currently and uh, maybe even what is still missing and what is the benefits uh, for other for encourage the other users to move from six to seven? Yes, uh, one thing that we are happy is the compatibility with the hardware, because with version seven we can use uh, a lot of newer chipset and a lot of uh, version of Intel-based hardware we can also use and it works well, and also uh, the capsman. It works with the, I think, Wi-Fi 6, but you still have to use different caps meant for the old version of wireless and the new version of the wireless. And it's sometimes it's not really good when it, we implement that solution to the customers. Yeah, because why you have to use two caps meant? Because, well, it's different wireless. <laughs> yeah, but I think I think that's, that's the thing uh, you have to work how to combine it so we can have one controllers and also a lot of new features we are happy with it uh, the zero tier and container we use it quite a lot and also several other things bgp also already with multi-core and also uh, rpki because in indonesia right now we are forced to use the rpki to announce the ip address and if microtic cannot support it, it's quite difficult for us to announce our uh, address to the internet. And also, yeah, I think the best thing is uh, it's open the possibility to use a newer chipset and it means that we can have uh, faster hardware for our network with the version 7. So, in other words, you want to say that you are still using Rotorus in lots of uh, x64, x uh, devices, uh, like uh, not dedicated hardware, but the general hardware that P PC yes. servers yes. and so on. So, that's still very yes. prevalent, prevalent in uh, Indonesia. It's very interesting. Yeah, to know. we a lot of people use the cloud core, cloud core router, the the 1000 version, and also the newer version, but. A lot of people also still prefer the Intel-based hardware to run with uh, Microtik and also some of them use in the cloud. So it's the cloud-based uh, router OS is also works quite good.
So you mentioned you use a container feature a lot. So what are you using it for? Well, sometimes uh, we need to install some other OS or some other uh, things in one big box. And with Microtik, it's quite easy to, to use. So you basically take an x80, x64 box, install a router OS, and then add containers to it, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, very interesting. So you haven't mentioned any features that are missing currently. What are you waiting for? What is missing for you? What? Yeah, the first one is the capsman. We really want it to be one capsman for all of the features. And if we compare to other vendors, uh, they start to have a cloud-based management that really works very easy. So I think that's the thing that Microtik is a little bit left behind because uh, right now people try to configure the network using the smartphone and everything and even they don't connect directly to the network, they want to control the network, have the alert if something goes wrong and everything. Maybe in Microtik we can set something like that, but it needs a lot of works. Compare if we have a cloud management system that really just works from the beginning. And also uh, in version 7, I think we still miss the BFD for the BGP. People, well, some people asking for it. I have a good news. Because uh, mm -hmm. either today or day after this podcast is recorded, uh, we will have a first beta out with the BFD implementation. Okay, and it's uh, working beta, or <laughs> yeah, it's it's working. So that, okay. that's uh, that's Great. all I can say. But com currently in command line uh, only for beta, but I think for seven that ten, we might get it out in a Winbox also. So that that feature f is finally implemented again. Okay, great. Great. So you can predict what I want. I will say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? Well, and also, uh, I know that we have faced the shortage problem of the chipset. So some of your model is quickly changed with the newer model. And yeah, it's in some uh, purchasing process. Sometimes the customer is still asking the older version, even if we have the newer version, but the specification is mentioned, the older version, and it's quite difficult to find uh, enough uh, hardware to supply for the needs for the customer. Yeah, ha hardware supply chain currently, yes, it's very active topic. And... Uh, it's, it's very interesting how it all developed because we can look into this all COVID stuff, all the shipping container uh, problem when there was not enough shipping containers because everyone, all the shipping containers were stuck in the ports because of the COVID and nobody was able to unload those because all the ports yeah. were closed. Also, there, is, uh, there was a situation when uh, China decided to save electricity and cut power to all the chip uh, manufacturers in ha to half. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, if you only have a half time the power, you will produce the more expensive nodes and uh, will drop the less expensive nodes. And this is one of the reasons why, for example, uh, Rotorboard 2011 is slowly going mm -hmm. to the end of life because we simply don't have a more CPUs yeah. to put them, so they are they are not manufactured anymore. Yeah, I believe we the next one is, will be a C CCR 2000 version, right? What do you mean? We will not have the CCR 1000. Y yes, we already moving to, moved already announced that uh, CCR 2000 is the current version. Yeah, that you should you should yes. move ahead. So yeah, as we are not producing chips ourselves, we are purchasing them. Uh, we have to adapt to the what market offers us. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe let's talk about a little bit about hardware and new hardware. Are there any particular mm -hmm. Microtik hardware that you are excited about that we recently announced? The the new I think it's uh, what what how you pronounce it the L zero zero seven nine L zero zero nine is it L L009, yes. 
How you pronounce it? Exactly that as you said. Oh, R009. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 quite interesting because it's a uh, small and it's also I think I believe it's a rack mounted with one U with four unit. It's exactly same form factor as 5009. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's the same case uh, but just uh, more affordable uh, insides. Yeah, and red color because it changed the uh, 2011, right? Yeah, we kept the color so that you can uh, take a look and make a difference if uh, from 5009, which is all black, and uh, L009 mm -hmm. will be uh, red, so that you can take a look and understand what exactly do you have uh, in your rack. <laughs> yes, and also the Wi-Fi 6, I think it's also uh, very nice, because right now, I think the era for the Wi-Fi 6, because people are already asking more than one megabit speed for the wireless and yeah but uh, there was lots of complaints about that uh, it's only 2.4 gigahertz not 5 mm -hmm. not 6 mm -hmm. uh, do you, <laughs> do you consider it as a as a problem and the question is uh, is that a problem or more expensive equipment will be would be the problem so is it better to have cheaper equipment with the two, only 2.4 or more expensive equipment with 5 in your particular five, Indonesian case. I think case. five is something you have to have because 2000, uh, 2.4 is very crowded. Uh, the default version of the FTTH modem is 2.4 and when I open 2.4 in my house, it's we, I see a lot of 2.4 frequency. So five gigahertz is, I think, is you have to have it. The, even if the uh, device will become uh, expen more expensive. Yes, yes, of course, of course. And for example, my experience in the training class, uh, if we talk about cheap equipment, uh, we can go with the hub light or mini hub, and, uh, but it's only 2.4, right? But sometimes it's quite difficult when you try the point-to-point -point wireless with between the students because we have a lot of SSID uh, in the class. So uh, in the class, I prefer to have the 5 gigahertz version of hub AC or hub AC light. So it, it will easier for us to simulate the lot of network in the same place. Okay, so if you have to name your favorite hardware equipment from Microtik, what would it be? I still I still like the Hub AC actually, the original version of Hub AC, because it's the more square one. Uh, yes, yes, the number one, the number one Hub AC because it has the fiber optics. It's small. It has a USB. It has everything, and also the wireless also quite good, and. We can use it uh, for a lot of things. So, uh, as a big ISP in very interesting uh, country with a lot of interesting terrain features and so on, mm -hmm. you probably have some interesting setups that you unique setups that you have used Microtix in. Uh, maybe you can share some uh, with uh, our viewers. Well, actually, the the interesting part is not from recent time but from like 10 10 years ago where we can make we still can make like 60 60 kilometers point to point links between two cities and we have like we are happy with 20 megabits speed but right now it's very difficult to sell something if you only have 20 max of speed because people asking for 50, 100 max. That's why right now, actually, all of our wireless tower already have a fiber optic connected. So the wireless is only for the last part of the network to reach the, the house of the customer. Between the tower, wireless is right now is only for backup because uh, it's not enough uh, I think not enough beam width we can play with for between the tower uh, connection. 
just for the context, uh, what is the typical connection to house, to home in Indonesia and how expensive is it? Well, right now, the usual house is 10 to 20 max with $15 per month. No, not 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 so expensive, but not not also yeah, not, not, so. not really fast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, basically, you don't have any issues with outside Indonesia connectivity. You have lots of uh, underwater cables, right? Yes. Yes. And uh, it looks like Starlink for you is uh, still very expensive uh, com in comparisons to the regular connection yes starling is coming and it's still the starting the starting equipment is quite expensive and also the monthly is expensive here so it's still not very first choice when you try to choose which connection you want to buy but in some remote uh, area it's the only choice you are also very currently very active in a training world uh, doing trainings, your company have more than one trainer. Uh, I'm sure yes. it because I, I have trained myself few. Uh, so, uh, so how many trainings are you doing? How many students do you have? And uh, what is do you think the current state of Microtech training? Yes, uh, I have. We have uh, six certified trainers plus six co-trainers. We call it co-trainers because they are not microtech certified already already but they help in the class and actually they can deliver the topics actually and uh, we target to have uh, 1000 students per year and before covid era we have 40 classes per year so it's almost every week we have a training class and the most interesting part is we are. Uh, we also train uh, people for from army. Yeah, and right now we already have seven hundred uh, MTCNA certified from the army. Usually we can't we can't talk about how how army uses stuff <laughs> because it's usually it's top yeah. secret. Well, it's it's uh, I, I I can explain the concept because. Uh, the army we work together with is the signal corps they call it a signal corps and their job 20 years ago is holding the radio and try to make the communication that's their job like 20 years ago but because uh, the new technology and new gadget everything right now even their radio is already ip based they have a radio communication with the cellular base connection and also Wi-Fi connection and everything. And we train them MTCNA and also several advanced classes. And right now we already have 700 of the army got the MTCNA certificate. So it's really a interesting training class because with the professional class, we usually we only make three days classes but with the army it's a 28 days of class because you can imagine the one who come here don't know about windows don't know about cabling and we start to teach them how to make a uh, ethernet cable how what is ip address and everything so it's it's a long classes but it's really interesting because at the end of the class, we have two or three days in the forest. So they really deploy wireless, IP camera and everything like what they have to do when they are in the job. Very interesting. But 28 days, that's a quite extensive training. Yes, four weeks of training. In here, uh, in Latvia, uh, we also have this communication corps uh, but uh, they usually filter out uh, people with a like, computer background. So if you mm -hmm. want to join that one, you sh should have at least background in uh, networking and stuff. So you don't have to learn everything from zero. 
<laughs> yes, that's what I have to do. <laughs> It's very interesting because uh, one of my first experiences in uh, teaching, uh, any teaching, was uh, to help uh, elderly to get uh, computer skills. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you have to teach what is double click, what is copy, what is paste, <laughs> and so on. The, the one thing uh, for sure is that you learn lots of patience as a teacher. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> and I think it helped me in the microtech trainings later on. So, uh, maybe let's, um, let's allow our viewers to imagine what is microtech user meeting look like? What is happening there? How it's, it is different from anything else uh, that you've been? And you've been on many mums. In Europe, yeah. in US, and also somewhere else, also. Well, in in Europe, especially, uh, I've I've been to all of the European mum, and uh, we meet a professional, microtech users, but they they work in networking company. They they are professional. In Indonesia, I think half of the participant is students. They come with other city with buses, and usually we have at least ten buses sitting uh, in front of the hotel, where the students come in and they want to at least they want to know what is microtech, what is networking, even maybe if they don't understand the presentation, but they are happy to to hands on the equipment we have in the booth, and they are happy to have a photo with you. Yeah, that that was that that was interesting. <laughs> the, at the first mom, when you arrived, you have like this, uh, like in the Hollywood movies, like a strip where you should uh, stand and take photos with. Uh, that was really interesting, and uh, yeah, the fact that uh, Latvians are the second, uh, second longest tallest people in the world also doesn't help. <laughs> you cannot <laughs> you cannot hide in Indonesia. <laughs> yes. And then there is such thing as Microtech Olympics. Yeah. What is that? Microtech Olympics is a even it's a champions championship for student. It's for the vocational school I told earlier. So it's a we make a event when they compete each other, and then the first one get a very good prize because I think it's more than 2000 US dollar price for the first winner how does the microtech olympic looks like what what do you need to do there okay the first one is the pre preliminary stages my team goes to eight cities around the indonesia and we make written tests where they have to it's like an mtcn equation but in indonesia and we just calculate which one is better, which one is not good. And then we ask them to answer the verbal question. It's like a TV show, you know, when people asking something and the team have to answer and we put the score for it. And we choose uh, several teams from each cities and it goes to the final. The final usually uh, one day before the mum. So it, we already have crowd because one day before mum, we usually we have meet and greet, right? You know that uh, meet and greet in Indonesia is also very uh, crowded uh, time. We have like 2,000, 3,000 people coming just for to get the T-shirt. And then, yeah, at that time, we make uh, the final for the Olympics. So... The final, the final is uh, will be shown to the microtech professional people who work in the networking company. They see the young generation of the engineer uh, compete each other, and usually the winner will got job very easy because it's the place where the school connected to the in, in industry. So. 
So basically, uh, it's a I, student self uh, self uh, representation and uh, boosting to to get into the industry. So gateway, basically. Yes, it's a gateway for them to get a good job, to work for the good uh, provider, and also uh, we already make this championship uh, five times before COVID. But we don't make it in COVID. But this year, we plan to make it again. So the only only thing missing is uh, is a Microtech user meeting with it. Yes, yes. So it will not be the same with before because we still in the question mark if the mom is there or not. Yeah. So uh, it's a good time for you to advertise. Uh, why should we make user meeting there? now after covid <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i think the the industry already miss the mom very much because we don't have mom in three years four years with this year yeah and uh the mom is the very good place to see the users to hear from them what is what they want what they need what the complaint question and everything and it's very good place to announce something new because you instantly you got 3000 people listening to you at, at the same time and usually because uh, Microtic make the first presentation and it's where the ballroom is really full of people I, I can only say that it's uh, it's uh it's a discussion topic here here in Microtech about resuming the mums and so on, because COVID uh, really added a few more challenges. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the consequences you can still feel that you cannot just get equipment. Yeah, it takes some time to get equipment, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, as Microtech user meeting as a advertisement. Uh, like loses a part of its its ability if you don't have an equipment to sell. Yeah, I think I understand the the difficulties to get the chipset and the production. And why should we make an advertisement if we don't have the product? Something like that is always take place, right? Yeah, that's exactly exactly what discussion we have. But uh, uh, we're really missing out on that uh, feedback uh, from the customers. That's the thing, I think. Uh, how you have uh, communication with the user is is really missed when you don't have mum. Yeah, now there is lots of users that still write to us uh, through the emails and so on. So we get some feedback, but of course, uh, face to face feedback usually is uh, quite different uh, on a different level. Sometimes people don't want to write anything on paper, but they will tell you uh, mm -hmm. when they meet you. So yeah, okay, so. Yeah, mums. Mums are currently many of our friends and partners are asking to return for the mums, probably because they have lots of feedback and probably because it works as a good advertisement. So, but currently main task is to catch up with all the orders uh, of equipment so that we can uh, uh, basically give you equipment as soon as you need it and not yeah. few not few months after <laughs> the fact so and uh, i think we already improved uh, quite a lot compared to the half a year ago yeah i something. think it's a shorter uh, lead time right now yes we are so in that department it looks like it's working also the chip shortage is uh, slowly but steady coming to the end and now only the question is to what chips are discontinued end of life and need to be replaced uh, with different equipment like you just saw with uh, 2011 uh, and CCR 1000 series. So uh, there will be a few more, which I can't announce currently, but uh, yeah. There are always some equipment that's missing uh, that, that could be implemented. So what is the equipment that Microtech should come up with uh, for you? What is the one thing that miss is missing? What setup, what switch? Yeah, what, what? I think the my answer is still the same since several years. One is the high-density access point. 
and the second one is the FTT aids, because as I monitored the growth of the industry in Indonesia, a lot of uh, wireless ISP already convert to the wireless uh, to the fiber optic uh, ISP, and the only Technology we have right now, I think, in the world is the FTTH, the PON technology. So the PON, not the active one, yeah. Yeah. the passive one. Yeah, the passive one, the PON. And I think that's the thing is uh, Microtik is missing right now. We we have a access point, we have a lot of routers. Your routers has new ports, faster uh, ports. But the one thing we cannot do with Microtik is the FTTH. Okay, let's go into the little bit more specific. So, perfect device would have what? How many ports? What interfaces? Yeah, of course the OL, OLT and the ONU. Okay, That's one the thing. One. The yeah, start with one, and you can supply to like thirty-two. You can split several times, and you maybe you will have a bigger version with four ports, eight ports. I think that's that's the start because for the small ISP, I think their customer may be around one hundred to one thousand subscribers, and I think they will have several uh, ONU around several OLT around. So. Yeah, I think one, four, or eight port is good start for the FTT eight equipment. Okay. Uh, anything else missing? The wireless, uh, high density wireless. High density That's wireless. That's the thing. So yeah. maybe you can elaborate. What do you mean by high density wireless? Okay. I don't talk about the new technology, uh, the Wi-Fi six, Wi-Fi whatever, AX or everything, but. What we need is uh, one access point that can have like 100 to 100 concurrent user. That's the thing that we need that it's miss in Microtik right now. So you mean beam forming antennas and such things so that... Yes, yes, of course, of course, to, to have such a lot of uh, client, I think you need uh, quite technology in the beam forming and everything. Okay, understood. So, uh, we covered software, we covered hardware, we also talked about training uh, a little bit. So maybe let's talk about what's missing in training from your point of view. So, what is the logical next step for Microtik to move into uh, training-wise? The training was also uh, what I make here with my team is we prepare a fiber optic uh, training classes. Yeah, and I think with your several equipments that have uh, fiber ports and everything, it's also maybe you need maybe uh, training in fiber optics and also several other things that. that uh the wireless you split it into two classes and actually usually people just take the first one the we and we talk about that we have the advanced class of the wireless that's not familiar yet in the market okay so the, the that division of wireless also was initiated by other trainers uh, yeah. So, lots of them required it, and I think in Europe it's quite quite popular because they are not like advanced or basic. They are more divided by uh, the type of usage of wireless. Uh, so one is more commercial, another one is for more home user, and so inside and outside. If I'm not mistaken, something like that was the vision. And and also another thing is that the MTCNA question is too popular. <laughs> everyone already know them by heart, yeah. Oh, everyone have a lot of 
a copy of the MTCNA question. So they don't need to join the classes if they just read everything and they will pass the exam with good score. So maybe just uh, take off examination of MTCN at all? Well, we need we still need the certification, but maybe we need to refresh the question and well, I know it's it's not easy because <laughs> NA is very basic and the question is just okay. Everything is registered and we will take take a look. So, maybe you have a uh, some questions to us. So, we haven't met for a few years. So maybe you have some microtech related questions that I can try to answer. <laughs> well, uh, the big question for Indonesian people is first the mum, but I know you cannot answer it right now. And actually, I already got the answer for other people in microtics. But that's the thing. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of users asking for the mum, and actually. There is a discussion how if we make mum without microtic, I mean, it's not that we don't want you to come, but how if we make mum with the community, I mean, we just open and people come and everything, is it possible? And that's that's a discussion between some of the trainer and also senior engineer in Indonesia, because it's really a, one of the best event in the year for the engineer, network engineer. Yeah, uh, I already stated the, <laughs> the, the information yeah, I know. have. So this is question to sales and marketing and they have much more information and, and discussion and so on. And I Okay, about, about the software. Uh, we know that when you develop version 7, I think it takes like five years just to announce without any beta version. And uh, is there any plan near when you change to version 8? Uh, there is a plan, but uh, there needs to, be, needs to be a very good reason uh, to, to, to move to that version 8. So, uh, for the version 6, the reason was uh, Tilera CC, no. yeah, Cilera, uh, CCR 1000 series. For version 7, it was a CCR 2000 series and new routing engine. So yeah. probably we have to wait for the new hardware uh, that requires uh, the new newest uh, Linux kernel because the Linux kernel is the main thing why we change the version. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several problems and issues with that because uh, uh, Linux kernels uh, also take away some support for some architectures. Yeah. The risk with moving to the newest Linux kernel is that uh, we will need to drop some of the architectures. And as a Microtik, uh, one of the, our policies is to keep software mm -hmm. support as long as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, like uh, we we have struggled with the. Uh, hardware that have very small uh, space for for router OS so some of the hardware has dropped support just because you can't get uh, router OS version 7 in the device itself because there's not enough space yeah i think it's because right now you have a big installation file and not split into a small one the problem is that uh, with the newest features and everything you can't really split them anymore they are so so interconnected that you have to keep it in the same package. It's related one to the other, right? Yeah, yeah. They are optimized as Linux kernel things and and, and so on. Also, uh, newest chipsets uh, uses uh, specific driver sets that rely on many different uh, things and so on. And uh, if in early rotors versions we were. It was easy for us just to write all the drivers ourselves. Just take a look mm -hmm. and just take what you need and make very small, very fast uh, driver. Then with the latest technologies, especially in wireless and so on, uh, you can't do that anymore. You need to rely on manufacturer uh, more and so on. So that restricts us for, from things that uh, what can we 
reduce what we can squeeze and so on so uh, currently like one of the changes that you might notice is that uh, our CRS series uh, have a new revisions that basically only have larger uh, NAND and memory uh, on them so that's yeah. that's the only thing that changes through that revision revision is the number on the sticker that you can see on the corner uh, so uh, also one of the things that we change revision for is then when we have these uh, chips that you we can't get anymore and we have to replace them so revision is just to make uh, this uh, possibility to use other chips that we can get uh, one one of the like trickiest parts was with the CCR 2000 series when suddenly uh, USB chip that we use which is quite specific one uh, lead time jumped to the more than a year so instead of like okay. 10 20 weeks you need to wait 50 60 weeks <laughs> so we had to make a hard choice and uh, to ship the device without the USB and USB the, and just a sticker <laughs> uh, to cover the hole where the USB should be so that's the unfortunate reality that we work uh, currently uh, but it's getting better we are adjusting uh, we are learning from it our newest hardware that we develop also uh, include the possibility to load many different options already by default so like we are taking uh, these uh, lessons in, into account and designing hardware so that we can ut utilize more than one option and we don't uh, have such 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 uh, issues in the future uh, it's quite interesting because we are uh, because of this chip shortage uh, situation we still have some products that have a uh, old Microtik logo uh, baked into yeah. the PCB uh, so you can already realize how how long ago was the original plan to release it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, fortunately we don't have any issues selling uh, everything that we produce currently uh, so yeah that's that, that's the situation but uh, rotors version 8 uh, we looking what is the trigger when we will need it because uh, uh, first of all chipset might uh, require uh, architecture might require newest Linux kernel and uh, swapping to the big uh, new Linux kernel will trigger Rotaris version 8 because uh, I experienced the change version since 2.3 2.4 2.0 nine i think and you have three four five six seven and i think the change from six to seven is the hardest time for for you because it's been years after announced and it's really get stable and everything yeah it, it was tough but there was combination of um, of the those things uh, like maybe we were a little bit too ambitious because uh, one of the things that's in version 7 that's developed by Microtik 100% from the zero is, mm -hmm. a, is a routing engine with all, okay. the, with the, all the routing protocols and it took, took us quite a lot of time to make it uh, make, make it multi-threaded and so on uh, and uh, we are still making it by the way <laughs> like BFD feature <laughs> is uh, added just uh, just just now and there is uh, lots of go finally we have a steady stream of feedback when customers write to us that okay everything works but this looks kind of strange I think this is not correct and when you deep dive into those setups and Finally, you have these regular bugs, not like a general issues when some feature is missing or doesn't work at all, but you have a, like already specific bugs that you just need to fix. And then, so from our perspective, version seven currently is uh, reached reached the point uh, where we can think about first long term version. As you noticed, uh, Router S version 7 currently still don't have a long-term version 
and yeah. usually it's the reason reason is because we don't have a full feature set currently to replace version 6 long term version but uh, with bfd added uh, we that was the like biggest one that was missing uh, i think there's few small ones but uh, as soon as we'll have full set uh, and they are of course that set is stable and working then we will go for the first long term version of uh, version 7 finally finally yes <laughs> that will that would be a big that that, that will be a big milestone. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but currently nothing uh, nothing for customers in version eight uh, to announce. Uh, we might get some inter internal builds with the newest kernel just for the newest chips and hardwares because we have steady stream of uh, newest chipsets coming in from. Uh, Vendors, because Microtik is large enough so that vendors are informing us about upcoming products so that mm -hmm. we can try it out and decide if it's for us, for our future products uh, and so on. So in my, uh, like in my department, uh, we are always testing something interesting. Will it end up as a product? I don't know. It's hard to tell, but uh, we always take a look and check out. Uh, what's new and one thing I can say you for sure the, the rate at which uh, the speeds the throughputs are increasing now I can't remember yeah. uh, like just like a two years ago I was uh, playing with first 25G 100G interfaces and now there's already 800G interfaces uh, going on to the boards and so on. So what will we do with all that traffic? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think the difference between like 10 years ago, 10 years ago, we talk about features, how you make the, I, re, I still remember how, how you make presentation about how to make a cal, queue, very complicated rules of queue. But now I think we're competing with the capacity the, the the fast of the traffic i think that's really uh, our main focus on the hardware and also on the setup yeah before you were limited to the cpu and you had to apply additional features to use that limited resources now when cpu yes. are getting more faster and faster cpu is not a limiting factor anymore and and the bandwidth is uh, cheaper so Sometimes I just uh, set the limit on the interface. Yes, exactly. So, so some of the features were much more important previously than they are now. Mm -hmm. So one topic that uh, my colleagues want to ask you uh, is about Indonesia and IP version 6. So mm -hmm. how far along are you? Uh, what are the features that are you using? Uh, what are the features that uh, you are using with Microtik and what Microtik is missing in ver IP version 6? Yes, uh, the discussion has been like 10 years and actually in my ISP, the core is ready for IP version 6. But when we deliver the access to the home users, usually people don't use it. So it's just, uh, we don't know, it's an egg and chicken, which one is first? Because uh, the network, the core is already, is ready for IP version 6, but the home user uh, equipment is not needed at, as much as we, we assume. So yeah, it's still IP version 4, and when you don't have a lot of IP version 4, the NAT is the only solution right now. Yeah, I think with the faster hardware, NAT is still can handle the traffic. But of course, I, I want the IP version 6 can roll out and use by the users. So we are just waiting when the home user need it and when their equipment is ready. So we have pretty much the same situation also here in Europe. So, 
let's go to final touches. Maybe there are some topics that you, you wanted to discuss that we didn't touch or something that you wanted to ask. <laughs> I think we have all the stories tell. But uh, one thing I I know that Microtik is quite serious in making a video right now. I think in the last two years, I think you make a lot of video and getting serious with the tutorial and everything. And I think it's a good part because, you know, one of my video has uh, more than one million viewers. It's the basic setup and it still goes up the viewers. So right now we we are in the era where people don't want to read and they just want to see the video. So the tutor the video tutorial is sometimes it's much more important than the wiki for example because people will search on YouTube first then on the search engine. That's that's the thing I think uh, Microtik maybe can uh, explore more because uh, I think the the video is still more for announcing something than the tutorial. So move training and the video making closer together basically. Yeah and I think that's okay. I mean I I make hundreds of video of tutorial and I still have people come to join the training class. Understood. Understood. Okay, it's a good good uh, thing to look into it. Million views. Yeah, we you are quite quite in front of us uh, in view count. <laughs> yes, I already passed the one hundred thousand subscriber. Oh, okay. So we we'll, we must listen to you then more carefully and learn from you. Okay, so it was a nice discussion. Uh, thank you for finding time. Uh, sorry that it took so long to arrange. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was really interesting to hear how it happens on the other side of the world. Uh, on personal note, I really miss Indonesia, especially some spicy food. <laughs> yes. So, uh, and we'll see if, if we can arrange uh, another meeting or, or any other way to see you guys there. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Okay, thank you very much for having me in this uh, channel. Goodbye. Bye.